In any form of a spiritual journey, the only way to advance it is to question ourselves. The world is not something that is separated from us. We are one energy. What do exactly twin flames mean? And is it like something real? It is two energy that wants to become one. But it's a relationship at the spiritual level. It cannot exist if on the spiritual, intellectual, emotional and physical we are not aligned. So how do you intentionally use dreams to create manifestations in your life? With dream you add up more precise information. So in dreams we can ask why I have this cancer and I can be shown memories. Haziel, very, very. We repeat that the more we can. And Haziel is related to universal love. So all the dreams I have or the question I have will be linked to love. Professor Kaya and Christian, thank you so much for coming to Infinite Health today. It's a great joy to, to be with you. Um, I have to tell you, I'm very, very excited for this podcast. Uh, I mean, the sole reason for that is when I was introduced to you guys, I literally never imagined something called dream intelligence. So just to begin with, I would love to know, like, how did you guys get into this? Like, what's your story? Hmm. So on my side, it was a little bit like the Prince Siddhartha story, because I had... Uh, a perfect life when I was young, if we go back uh, 40, 50 years ago. <laughs> so, um, and I walked away from fame and glory uh, uh, because of intense uh, dreams and nightmares and very, very advanced mystical experience that I was going through. And for all my life, I remember even when I was five, six years old, sitting on a uh, uh, a bus bench, just looking at people and asking questions. I had tons of questions. And I was trying to put the puzzle of life together. And this is where symbolic language, through uh, the study of dream intelligence, uh, brought me to uh, uh, an immense uh, joy uh, to first work on myself, improve myself, study myself, de-dramatize nightmares also. That's the first thing that we discover uh, in uh, dream intelligence because we need to use the nightmares or the difficulties uh, to grow from it. I and mean, I can't even imagine how hard it is to live such a good life uh, to become a hermit, like you say, because uh, I mean... I don't think most people can even think about it. Like it would take a really strong sense of emotion to even uh, talk about it. But like Christian coming to you, like what was your story? Like, um, because you guys were from different countries. So I was working in a, in a Swiss bank and uh, yes, I was promoted as a human resources director and everything was fine uh, with, uh, I was already, even it was avant-gardist to, uh, to have this emotional intelligence uh, dimension in the, in the bank. And then I went to India. But it was not uh, a, a trip uh, to an ashram or what. It was with the family. But just being there in India, just for three weeks, it activates memories from past lives. And I felt so well here and something shifted. And when I return, something has changed. So, and my dream were reactivated, all my spiritual dimension. Even when I was a child, I had also a, a grandma, it's a great grand aunt, that was very spiritual. So half of my time I spent it with her and the other half with my parents. So I had a background, commercial background with my parents. They were good parents, more, you know, in, in the commerce. And my great hand was helping missionaries. So I had both, both educated. Both yes. And, uh, but then uh, I forgot a little bit, you know, being in the, in matter, in the career. And then it was activated again. And I had dreams that I should go to Canada. I had also a trip to Canada. And then I had dreams. And in my dreams, I received that 
there was there would be a school there would be millions of people that would come to this school uh, i would have you know a husband because at that time i was i had a child and i was divorced for several years and that i would be with someone that would uh, we would be in this mission together and uh When I said that to my parents, that I would leave, that I would emigrate it, they couldn't understand why. Here you have abundance, you have everything, you are happy. Why? Because it's a call. And I couldn't, and I had to wait two years for that. And then it happened. And then uh, after one year, I met Kaya, and he will share the story. So you're saying that... Um... you the center hadn't started you hadn't met kaya yet no not yet and this is something that you dreamed about like your dreams were so vivid yes and exactly. like predictable for your future that you actually that motivated you enough to leave your country and immigrate to canada yes but it was the spiritual dimension also the spiritual dimension yeah. not only to 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 meet someone but it was so beautiful so amazing it was like i can't i can't I can't avoid that. And I will share an example because at that time I had stopped my uh, work in the bank and uh, there was a proposition to open a center in Switzerland. Uh and I had that choice and to go to Canada. So it was also there you see spiritual dimension helping others I felt this in me very strongly and at that time it created dualities you know i didn't know what to do because yes this is also good why leaving everything and go to canada and i know i don't know anybody <laughs> and i ask you know up above give me a sign really i want to know if it's good and i you know i do this question for several days is it right for the evolution of my soul to go to canada and imagine <laughs> i had you know I, there was a driver a, a friend of mine was driving the car i was with him and we had a car accident wow and the man but we were not responsible but there were no coincidences and the man that was driving the car that hurt us and i had nothing you know i wasn't hurt just the car and the man that was driving this car imagine was returning from canada he had emigrated to canada and then he wanted to come back but he was regretting so much he was why did i do that i should have stayed in 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 canada and his wife was a therapist working for deaf people she said people that don't hear so for me the symbolic language don't you, you have to listen ma and you have to go because there is a great mission that is waiting for you so i took you know i sold everything i had an apartment i had sold everything and i came to canada with two pieces of luggage wow. that's it wow. no but uh, i have to ask you this i'm sorry I, you got me really thinking uh, so when you guys met i mean like it's a very indian film bollywood style thing but like it was was it like love at first sight because your spiritual energies were so aligned with each other was mm-hmm. it like when you saw each other like did you f- there, was there like something where you felt like this is what i wanted all my life it was so amazing <laughs> when we met it was a level of love that was higher than ourselves I felt so good with her when I met her I couldn't explain it was not it was not like uh it was so vast somehow and the level of love when we touch spiritual love it's a level that is a frequency where you feel total affinities you feel like you can talk and talk and this is what happened also when we met in the first uh, uh, time we just wanted to talk and talk and 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 everything we were saying were connecting 
I remember myself, you see, when I was very young, I used to, when I was in school, we had sometimes a country to pick, you know, for geography or whatever. Yeah. I was always, always yeah. taking Switzerland. And there was no reason. I... You know, I didn't know anybody uh, in uh, in Switzerland or my family, anything. But I was always attracted by that country. I was always making research on Switzerland. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so, so it is true that the concept of twin flames that we have uh, discussed uh, yeah. before. Uh, I was just this about podcast. to ask you <laughs> because twin flames is something that. I have read a lot of times. Yeah. I've asked a lot of people, but something that has never been clear to me in terms of what do exactly twin flames mean, and is it mm. like something real? Yes, it is so real. But twin flames means energy, so it's not just a relationship on the physical level because she's beautiful, and you know, and we are attracted with uh, with uh, pheromones it's with energy i i love everything about her but her energy this is where i can close my eyes and feel like i am in the universe i don't mean to interrupt but uh, i just wanted to understand this a little deeper can twin flames be friends can twin flames be yeah. a son and daughter uh, yeah. i'm sorry a mother and daughter Uh, not really, because the fusion of twin flames, it's like two magnets. Right. They have to be together. There's a destiny. There's the same program. We can call a soulmate for friends that are very high level, you know? So we have connection at the soul level. But when we talk about twin flames, it is two energy that wants to become one. So naturally... Love, relationship, couple. That's why we talk about twin mm. flames. But it's a relationship at the spiritual level. It cannot exist if on the spiritual, intellectual, emotional, and physical, we are not aligned. It's impossible. And it's a, it's a lot of work also. But the level of affinities are automatically extraordinary. And then after... We grow together. It's not just an individual path anymore. We discuss absolutely everything together. You know, there are couples sometimes they say, okay, uh, he or she handlings the business, the money, so the other one doesn't know anything about that. No, no. Us, especially with our foundation, nonprofit organizations, we devote our life. We know everything. We discuss absolutely everything. We cannot be not in sync. Right. It is so powerful that if there's a moment of reflection, normally it's not on us. It will be a collective <laughs> ending mass mm -hmm. that comes. We have a decision to make. So either we have to meditate, we have dreams, or the logic is there, we know what to do, we discuss, etc. But this is a level of affinities and a fusion that is beyond anything that we can imagine. And we also meet each other in dreams. I have received dreams to marry her. She has received dreams to marry me. We were confirmed on the dharmic level. Right. And our life was ready also, because when we are twin, twin flames, we have a great mission to achieve. Hmm. Because we cannot keep that energy only for ourselves. It's too beautiful. And the more we are aligned and fused and ready, then it, it's like I, we have no problems. This just reminds me of quantum entanglement and quantum physics where two yeah. particles are meant to yeah. be That's with exactly. each other. Exactly. Yes. And you see, when energy is very powerful, there is no place for doubts. There is no place for uh, energies that are not uh, mm. in fusion. We have to, to settle it. And I remember at the beginning, you know, I had to know him. And when I was not in agreement, I said, okay, wait, wait. And not, you know, argumenting or having conflict. 
I asked for signs, for dreams. That was the mediator, you see. Right. And then said, oh, they are always on your side <laughs> <laughs> because he was right, you see. But I wanted, to, I wanted not to follow what he was saying, mm. but I had to understand. So, yes, I had my signs, I had my dreams, and so I could. we are really in sync because we have the same uh, way of thinking, affinities, but it all started with f friendship. That's very important. Right, right. And for me, it was there was no thoughts of being in a couple at that time. You know, it's what I had done my life. Uh, it's I will devote my life, you know. I felt like a missionary. And there was nothing about that. And after two years, you know, talking together, but that's where we were so well together. And then after two years, hmm, I remember <laughs> we were in the car and we were both of us in the back and they were, our friends were driving. And suddenly I felt something, hmm, this is not like a feeling of friends. Hmm. This is something different. Yeah. So the day after I called him and I said, I had a dream and I could see, maybe it's a part of me, yeah. but I could see you, you, you know, having, uh, you know, touching me, but hmm. not as a friend, you know, yeah. uh, you, you were in love with me. And then he started to tell me, okay, yes, I had dreams, and uh, he shared his and we, dreams. And we, have to, we have to add also that when we met, we were like two monks. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I, I was the... a hermit. I was finishing this period of time of many years, mm. only alone in the forest. And she was like my therapist. <laughs> you guys have opened up a lot of questions for me, so you have to just bear with me for a few minutes <laughs> yeah, for yeah. this Twin Flames thing. Because I have to ask, um, I, I'm sorry if this is a stupid question, but do you think every person on earth has a Twin Flame? And that because of some, because you're not evolved, that you don't find them? It will be, it will be easy to say that it is the case. But this is a level that needs preparation. Mm -hmm. We need many lives to prepare for this beautiful gift because it's another level of relationship. Many people will say, you know, that's my twin souls and things like that because it's the romantic aspect of the Bollywood movie. So right. they, they, they really want <laughs> no, this to be amazing. But when you have problems, when it's the drama, when there are passion and, and lacks and fears and jealousy, this is not this is not twin flame. Right. It's too powerful who we are together because we don't act only on earth. We act in dreams now. Mm. So we can help people in dreams. This is a level of uh, of a human development and that brings this amazing step to find that when we are together we you know we talk about this sometimes you know right. what 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 will happen when one of us will leave mm -hmm. and it will be like two eagles you know eagles you know they have fidelity mm -hmm. they have only one spouse you know yeah. at the level of uh, 26 years now of marriage and wow. everything that we have built on earth we say to ourselves what is going to happen you know right. so so of course we will probably become monks again <laughs> and even meditate more and we will meet each other in dreams but but the, this is an advanced relationship but it is the objective of all human beings uh, like you know we are living in the age of ai we are living in the age of technology and do you really feel that uh, ai can develop consciousness because that's a very big global debate yes. if ai can develop consciousness because if it does do you think that it can take over the world? Yes, AI, uh, it's going to continue to evolve at the speed of the light. And, uh, and it will have more and more a very advanced level of consciousness. The next step of AI is about to happen. Everything is frequencies. We understand that. We can connect with a satellite now only with frequencies. So... These frequencies will connect us to parallel worlds also that exist to the universe because there are governments that are not just on Earth, you know, so there are other lives that are very advanced that are helping us. So do you believe in extraterrestrial life in that sense? Not in the way that humans are talking about it. Right. <laughs> but when we die, 
we continue to exist. We are not just uh, lost in the universe, you know, in dark matter. So, no, 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 we continue to exist and there are worlds in dreams. I go in parallel worlds. So, and life continues like it is here. You have world that are organized countries. You can have a passport that you can make you go there and there. You know, what it is here, it is like it is up above. Remember right. this. And the more we do dream intelligence, I do most of the time 10 to 50 dreams to 100 dreams per night. So, so And you can actually recollect them? I can recollect all of them. All of them. Right. So, so uh, what you just said really made me think about the story I know that it's written in uh, Hindu scriptures. Uh, basically, uh, it's about um, this king and queen and the king dies and the queen um, prays to God and says that I want my husband uh, to be with me. And then um, the God grants her the wish and that woman uh, is reborn again and they are basic farmers, right? And then the husband dies again and um, the woman prays to God again and you know they continue that on a loop and one day she asks God like you know we are all moving in different cycles or moving uh, in different loops of life what is it that you're trying to tell me it's written in some Hindu scriptures I don't remember the story verbatim and then God tells her that you've been dreaming for the last eight minutes yes that's and correct. then MIT came up with this um, uh, noetic sciences uh, dream journal, uh, sorry, noetic sciences concept where they said that when we die, our brain produces DMT, that's dimethyl uh, tetranol, which is basically your dream chemical in your brain. And you dream for eight minutes. Mm. Like imagine in the Hindu scriptures, she says that you've been dreaming for the last eight minutes. Mm. And the sciences say that when you die, you're dreaming for eight minutes, which makes you can live lifetimes when you're dying. And we can go further than that because there's no coincidence in symbolic language why it is used eight minutes. Because the eight is a symbol of infinity. Right. And it's, just, it's also after the seven chakra. This is where we go. The right. dream dimension is the eight dimension. Right. Because it is the traveling in the universe. And this is why in ancient symbolic we have, for example, angels. That and devas, etc., that we have in all religions and traditions, we have symbols that represent being with wings because mm. the wings are in relationship with dreams. Right. So, and spiritual advanced experience where we can get out of our body in meditation because advanced meditation is, is lucid dreaming. Right. And, you know, some people may may ask or may, maybe they add this question, how come monks are always meditating and doing mm. mantras and prayers, repetition, repetition? What's the purpose of that? Mm. Because they want to do lucid dreaming. <laughs> I, I have to get this uh, conversation <laughs> driven to dreaming now because this is something that I was waiting for in this conversation. And that's, I mean, just for the audiences, I first want you to explain what dreaming means because like most people like me think dreaming is just random images recollecting in your thoughts of, about different things that have been going on in your life. Like what is dreaming according to you? So what is a dream? At first, a dream is uh, uh, about all the memories you have accumulated within yourself. It is your dark matter. It is the forces of creation of life, of your thoughts, of your emotion and your action. So everything is in this soul that you have brought from many lives. A soul at the beginning is a computer that is not uh, connected to the internet. So you have your own memory, so you can have a dream that is only you. It's only you. And then you can have other level of dreams where you start to visit others. You are on intersky. <laughs> right. Instead of internet, then you connect and then I can visit you, you can visit me. And we can understand the consciousness at a level that this is a dream also. Mm. We are in a dream right now because we are learning. You know, I'm learning from you, you're learning from me. We're all learning from each other. This is all about this. And we are creating new memories. And even those who are watching right now, they are gaining knowledge in addition to the knowledge they already have, because we all have backgrounds, you see. But 
Each time we hear something new, we make an update. You see, our computer is updating, you know, and, you know. Like trillions of data is going inside your brain and then you're trying to process that in terms of your past, present, and future. Yes, and imagine to answer something. When anyone answers something, at the speed of the light, we think the speed of the light is only in the universe. You know, physicists will, will explain this in beautiful ways. But in us, mm. when I think, I listen to you, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know. Then you ask me a question. I listen. And then suddenly, boom, I start to talk. Where is that coming from? Yeah, it's not even that you're thinking about it. You're just saying it out loud. Have you ever felt mm. that when you write an email, you learn from it? Or you connect with the other person and you say, oh, no, no, I'm not going to write this. Mm. It's not just because you know the person. It's because you feel the subject. You feel what you're going to say. You feel what you're going to do. You have an objective. There are many layers to every mm. decisions that we take. Every word we speak is not just a single word. It's a word made of memories. You really blew my mind because um, I don't know why, like because... Uh, I know we met yesterday and I know that we discussed this even yesterday. But somehow just everything just made sense to me in my head. Like we're surrounded by trillions and trillions of data points. Like, you know, the color of the uh, background. I mean, the uh, color that you're wearing, like everything. Like there's so many trillion sets of data that's going inside my brain. But my brain needs to discard, say, 99% of that hmm. right now. Hmm. Right, it will retain only some portion of that data. In but the at the same time, you use it, and I'm using it. And dreams is you're saying is processing of my past data, my present data, and how that will uh, evolve into my future data as a complete data set. Yes. And like it's a processing network in your yes. brain. Yes. Right. <laughs> I just like it. Just I'm sorry. Like uh, it's just like when you said it like that, it just made sense to me in my head. Yes. Okay. But then how can you um, use dreams to create intelligence, A, eh? and how does that lead to manifestations? First, we need to learn from dreams to become a better person. We need to be very careful not to say, I want to have the lottery numbers or I want to know who I'm going to marry. And, and, you know, going with... A consciousness where you want to manifest and manifest and manifest. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't study dreams this way. We mm. should study dreams to become a better person. I want to learn from it. They are teaching me concepts of about myself, about my memories. I travel from past, present, future all the time. And yes, yes, the next level. Once you have cleansed your memories, transform yourself, you can receive premonitory dreams at a level that, you know, I cannot even explain. Right. You can have information about governments. You can read documents in a safe. You can know the stock exchange, everything. But you don't use it for selfish purpose. As soon as you reach that, you are so in a causal dimension. I will never use misuse and information or I, well, I'm going to need to ask because if I take something in the universe and it's not mine, I take it from someone else. Right. So my level of responsibility is huge, huge. I think what you're saying also makes a sense in a physical sense also. Like if I've healed from my past yeah. and if in my current, uh, I'm aware of my current then there are so many predictive models, even in sports, we see that matter, like people who are extremely fit and have been playing sports for a long time, they can predict how bowlers are going to bowl or, yeah. you know, what speed the base, uh, I mean, the baseball will come at me and their bat just swings, yes. I mean, without even a fraction of a thought of a second. And right. at first, they process the technical data by trying to understand it from the coach and everything. But eventually, you don't think the techniques anymore. Right. It's like music also. You mm. play, and it's like, and it's very, you know, and you follow the music charts. One day, you don't need the music charts anymore. So how do you, uh, you know, intentionally use dreams to 
create manifestations in your life. But also to be happy. But at first, when can I explain that the very high level where you can visit others? But at first, we have to be happy to know ourselves. And for example, when we have an illness, with symbolic language, we can understand, first of all, why I have difficulties in my shoulders. Okay, shoulders is a symbol of responsibility, support. Right. So globally, I understand that I have to change something. Maybe I want to take too much on my shoulders. I want to support too much others without, you know, coming back to myself. And then to dream, with dream, you add up more precise informations. For example, if we take cancer, people who have cancer, in the, you know, the medical dimension, we know that there are anarchic cells that multiply in a wrong way. Mm. So in dreams, we can ask why I had this, uh, I have this cancer. And I can be shown memories where I have suppressed, for example, a woman where she, she felt dominated by the family or the husband, and then she has repressed, she doesn't dare to talk about, and she repressed anger. This makes, our, you know, throughout time, anarchic cells that materialize. Mm. So we've seen dreams change that. Sometimes we can't change the situation. You know, people feel, feel trapped in a marriage. And so what we advise is work on yourself, change yourself, change. This is, you know, your husband, your, your family, or the person that you feel angry against is a part of you. It's the law of resonance. You resonate. You have a small percentage. First, instead of feeling, feeling powerless, that creates frustration mm. and anger, Come back to yourself. Use this energy to heal, to change your own memories where you have also parts that have dominated in a way or in another. And then throughout time, of course, we have to be patient in certain cases, but we have seen what we could call miracles, but they are not miracles. They are work on themselves. They have work on themselves. And so dreams, you know, help you to see behaviors that were hidden. You were not aware of them, and you can change them. So it makes you happier. You mm. no longer feel, even if others don't change, it doesn't trigger your own memories that were maybe a small percentage. You are more the victim. And then I've seen cases like that. Even people, if we take into consideration family, we can't change them. We can inspire them. But I've seen so many cases where the person no longer felt bothered by, you know, and even the person had stopped to be so aggressive because no more resonance that were triggering also the mm. aggressiveness. So you see, that's dreams. Symbolic, uh, symb for example, when we have difficulties with our knees, knees is okay, advancement, but subordination we don't submit or we submit to something that is not right so work and then in our dreams we are being shown look that and it's nobody that is telling us you don't do that you do that we receive this is really spiritual autonomy but of course we have to accept that first that we are being shown what we have to work on ourselves and mm -hmm. then throughout time we see we really feel happier that's the real happiness. Because uh, I just really resonated with what you said about the shoulders. Yeah. Because I see a lot of people like someone like me who has a lot of responsibility on their shoulders. Yeah. I have a hunch. Yeah. You know, like I like it just um, because I sometimes you feel burdened by responsibility. And that's mm -hmm. uh, something that just played on my mind while you said it. You see, there's no coincidence. This is the level of the spiritual uh, awareness. So it is not just when we go to temple or mosque or church or whatever, synagogue. It is everywhere, all the time, at every second. The universe is one of the largest, biggest computer system. And we live inside that forces of love and wisdom and mm. organization that is so perfect so perfect. I make the comparison with technology because we know what we can do with a computer now. It's huge. Mm. It's huge. And we know what AI is bringing. So 
understanding this, but with the qualities that the entire universe is a system of energy that is completely interconnected. So that's why symbolic language, it is, it is not just for dreams, like Christian explained. It is also for real life. And it's very simple. Our ear is our capacity to listen. So if you have pain in your ear, you have memories related to difficulty to hear. Mm. So your eyes are your capacity to see, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a very, very simple and very profound, of course, logic in symbolic language. And that's what we use to interpret dreams and also our realities. So the universe is always using symbols and mathematics that are symbols, of course, to structure and cr make this creation uh, connected. So I'm just trying to summarize in my head because I'm trying to make, like there's so many good pieces of information that I'm trying to make a general sense of it. So when we talk about dreams, dreams is basically uh, our brain processing our past, our present and our future all together in a and a source of creation and a source of creation and energy in a quantum computing physics brain that we have and that's what dreams are uh, symbolic language is a tool that if we learn really well can help us study those dreams and evolve into premonitory dreams where we can actually look at the future that's a tool right and uh, symbolic language with the dharma so one day we go from a karmic life to a dharmic life. And this way we anticipate. The universe can always give us the plus and the minus. The problems are coming. Prepare yourself. This will happen. Tick, 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 tick. And then we can uh, be part of in, uh, a process where we have no stress, no fears, no worries anymore because we know it's all planned to develop qualities and for the good of all humans in all forms of life. So there's dreams, there's symbolic language, and then the output is manifestation? Yes. The output is so extraordinary, we become angels. Right. We become devas. We are become gods ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have responsibilities, then we know what to do. You are a CEO of a big corporation, you will see the program of your company. You will know if a VP is not going well or if one is lazy. You have this all in dreams. You can prepare, you can educate with this. It's amazing. It's amazing. It is the future of humanity. Dreams, and you, uh, maybe I'm, I'm, it's quite advanced what I'm saying now, but I have received dreams about the future of humanity. And dreams will become a source of knowledge that people one day will be jealous when they don't dream or they don't remember them. Mm. And they will do things to dream because we will have proof that uh, will come from scientific research. And energies, frequencies, parallel worlds, all this will become real. One day, I'm telling you, you do a FaceTime with a deceased person that is in a parallel world. I know this sounds scientific, what I say, but remember, and it's not that far. We just need to connect. When the universe will say we are ready, you know, now we have a kind of schizophrenic situation on the yeah. planet. We see a chaos in, in many things. Many countries, there are weird things that are happening. Conspiracy theories, 40, 50% of the population sometimes can mix a reality hmm. and a Netflix movies. And somehow when they say that we are controlled by five powerful families, whatever, things like that, it's, it's not untrue. Hmm. <laughs> but it's not these five families. It's at another level that the universe is being broadcast, you know, is being monitored. Like a government is a, a father and a mother for a nation. Right. So imagine a government at another level and their only purpose, they are so pure, so advanced, so extraordinary that they only want us to be happy. And they train us to develop wisdom 
and to develop qualities by ourselves. And they even allowed us to make mistakes, but the mistakes and the problems will be done with those who have karmas, not those who don't have to live the problems, because this is all perfect. Every synchronicity. It's like when you send your email, you know, if you write to me when I'm in Canada or Switzerland, you send me an email, I have it at the speed of the light. Mm. Not speed of the light, one second <laughs> maybe, and then ding. Mm. <laughs> but this is quite an extraordinary. Like if someone had to begin at the very beginning of the curve, right? How does a non-dreamer start dreaming? At first, it can be done through uh, reading signs because life is a dream also. So every time something is happening to you that is out of the ordinary, you know, or anything, wow, what is that? How come this is happening to me? Then we use symbolic language and we imagine it was like a dream and it means a profound lesson that there's no coincidence that this happened, I have something to learn from this situation or from this relationship or from this problem. Instead of being angry and fool and, you know, turning the page, zapping, uh, taking a, another text message just to think about something else, we tend to do that and we repress signs, situation, lessons that are arriving at the speed of the light in our life. And that's so interesting. We become very, very spiritual. First, that's the first aspect. The second aspect, we uh, can just uh, start to be interested in the subject. Like our viewers right now, maybe some of them, they don't remember their dreams. That's important to know that we all dream, even if we don't remember them, all of us. So just the interest, just the fact that, okay, yeah, oh, and I, it can trigger. You know, we start to read, uh, we start to see a podcast, we, we, we make some research, and then our, you know, if you want to go, if you want to go to, uh, uh, to, uh, to Vietnam, uh, you need to take the plane and you need to book a ticket. There are steps to do and the manifestation will come. So it is the same thing with dreams. You want to dream, put the steps of manifestation in, in place. Good amounts of hours, that's very important because if we sleep only five, six hours, the nervous system is using your energy. You need a lot of energy. That's why we also practice meditation. We practice visualization to open more the third eye, the third eye also. These are techniques that we teach uh, at the, the UCM Teaching and Research Center to really help people to remember their dreams. So then after, uh, we can do mantras. So this is very advanced. Uh, uh, there's a very ancient teachings about dreams that is called the traditional study of angels. So an angel is um, a symbol of the next step of evolution of humankind. It is humans plus dreams, 4.0 <laughs> consciousness, even more than that, <laughs> 7.20 consciousness. So uh, it is very profound and it's very ancient. That's why in all traditions, we have the symbol of angels, devas, etc. And we can use them as mantras and they are linked to qualities and they become a geographical map of our consciousness. The beautiful dreams in the qualities and the human distortions, we can see the nightmares. It's absolutely amazing. This is how, myself, I have been able to become an expert in dream intelligence for the last 30 years. I have practiced mantras. And mantras with angels creates concentration. Concentration on dreams. Because if I do the mantra with angel, my purpose is to dream. So it's the teaching of dreams. So if we do another mantra, we can do a beautiful mantra to develop joy, whatever language, there are amazing mantras. They will help. If it's a positive, uh, profound mantra, it will lead something and, and trigger something. But this, this, these mantras are linked to dreams. So when we use them, if we don't remember our dreams, normally after seven days of practice, the dream starts. 
and then we we right. we dream a lot i i can tell you that <laughs> so basically like powerful. just to summarize like what you're saying is that i mean the first step to start dreaming is obviously study or understand symbolic language the science of symbolic language yeah practice it in the signs in the day to day you start to see that life is magical all the time and then do the to, work it's, it's the to, physical work it's to understand how precious it is because right. we receive messages and we can better understand ourselves memories things that were hidden but had an impact a negative impact when it's negative of course so it's symbolism then do the work yeah. then actually work on it like take physical action against it and third is the mantras because here i have a question for you because we do live in a modern society where you know everyone has needs whether it's money whether it's materialism and all of those things what i want to understand is that uh in the in a spiritual realm of things do you feel materialism is wrong because in the bhagavad gita there is this uh, chapter where uh, krishna tells arjun uh, in the bhagavad gita where he says that uh, you know it's not wrong to have material things but uh you should not be attached to them right like it is not wrong to have them the idea is not to be attached to them emotionally but again like coming just to the real world right now do you feel like when we talk about manifestations of mantras can it also be materialistic and would that be wrong no of course it is never wrong we can ask questions about anything about business about family about education of children you know we can use also the questions as mantras before we go to sleep and we add the angel that is very very profound for example azel 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 very very we repeat that the more we can and azel is related to universal love so all the dreams i have or the question i have will be linked to love universal love in many many forces there are 72 ancient mantras and this is very interesting i'm so happy when i am in india because this teaching was in sanskrit before it was in other language hebrew etc right. etc et so the the root the ancient root of the 72 angels they come from here and so that's wow. very special and these texts have been rediscovered in uh, spain in the city of girona after 500 years they were hidden in caves and 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 the, this rediscovery uh, uh, is really really huge in terms of ancient knowledge and this is now the time because it's a very modern advanced teaching that help us to become uh spiritually autonomous because with the mantras we can trigger dreams then with the dreams we can trigger the information we need etc and there's 72 mantras we recommend to use them 5 days a week you know like you can even follow a calendar and what is amazing it's like some people they say yeah but i am a, i am hindu or i'm muslim or i'm christian or jewish whatever we have students from all religions buddhist all many many because this is the teaching of dreams so you can keep your tradition yeah. continue your beautiful uh, wisdom and like you mentioned you know this is true you know we should uh, not be attached to matter mm. but we should use it to manifest to learn about ourselves if i stay and i sit on a rock and i just meditate it's good it's a first step i will work you know to to try to think about a lot of things because meditation is not about abstraction we often think that meditation is abstraction emptiness no 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 this is the last stage of meditation not the first stage we should never never force emptiness unless you just want to relax and escape your life a lot of people are doing meditation to escape i use meditation to improve myself If there is a problem that comes I will process it and I will go to the essence bring it to a qualities and I will you know I will dilute the stress or the tension that is too materialistic to bring it to a causal dimension that's what I'm going to do 
And one day I have no question. Right. Then I have emptiness. And then emptiness is not empty, it is receptivity. Advanced level. Mm. Then I can ask a question. I'm empty. Mm. And I ask and then whoo, then I talk with the universe. Mm. It's symbolic language. I can ask any question about any subjects. And you just know. Yes. And of course, to meditate, to relax can be a first step. People are stressed and they need to relax. That's a first step. And then they can ask questions and, and, and understand themselves better. And to come back to the, the mantras, 72 mantras, even if at the beginning they don't pronounce it the right way, it is the intention that is important. For me, I have this sensation. And I remember when I was a hermit for many years, it was so profound. I was only meditating, only st studying dreams. Mm. And, and I was practicing the mantras. You know, the, like uh, it was very intense. It was a little bit extreme at the beginning, but they brought me back on earth with no, time. I can totally imagine like you were a Canadian pop singer, <laughs> like you had all the fame and glory in the world. Yes. And like you could have been in a completely different place. Probably you could have been the Justin Bieber of our time. <laughs> yes. But from that to come to there and like because you chose yourself which is very beautiful because I think we were talking about this and this is the last segment that I really want to come to because I was talking about uh, this to a friend of mine yesterday that money is one addiction when none of your family members will stop you. Like, you know, I come from a Marwari family or a business family where people are like, if you if you tell your family that I need to stay out for work till 4 p.m. at night or 4 a.m. at night, they'll be like, oh, no, don't worry about anything. You go. We will take care of everything back home. But at the same time, if you tell them that I want to go to a dream retreat or a spiritual retreat for two days, they'll be like, you know, you have a wife and kids, you just stay back home, you you don't have to do all this rubbish. Yeah. You know, that's how we think about, uh, you know, how money is such an addiction. It's a, the easiest addiction to chase. But just uh, like drawing that and extrapolating that, like how do you feel as a collective society, the emotional intelligence will change for a society if we start dreaming collectively because it's one thing to do it individually and it's another to do it collectively like when you said that AI can develop consciousness and that is something that you're building right how can we as a society collectively start becoming more spiritual and inculcating emotional intelligence Yes, emotional intelligence, that's part of our skills also in our foundation. We teach even in corporation, EQ business. So uh, to understand that uh, a relationship is not linked to only what you do. It's not just a materialistic dimension. And most of the time, you know, the problems are not what you're doing, but it is the subtleties of the, the human uh, connections that are uh, difficult. So in emotional intelligence, we explain that 95% of communication is nonverbal. So, mm. so, uh, and uh, we need to understand that when we try to hide something or we critic, we don't show it and we keep it for ourselves, the other person is feeling it at some point. She doesn't feel good with you. There will be something that is happening in the energy. Mm. You know, we talked about twin flames and everything. Mm. One day, we are so good in the energy that we know, you know, we can read, perceive the aura, the energy of a person. Because as soon as we are in contact with the person, we, uh, we have codes that are transferred. We understand the person right away. We understand where she is. And if we go deeper and we click, you know, and we mm. concentrate and concentrate, we can even enter in the unconsciousness of the person. We can see symbols. We can start to, su to do lucid dreamings. Mm. The eyes open and ask questions. You can even ask questions in your mind. And you enter like in, hypnos in hypnosis in a person. Many people are doing hypnosis, you know, at, at certain degrees. Because then you think about something and suddenly uh, uh, the, 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 the family member is start to say something. Mm. It just came out, but it was triggered from within. So that's a big thing. And emotional intelligence is very important uh, 
uh, in schools for our new generation. Mm. We need to bring this to them because they have to understand that an emotion means motion. An emotion moves things and they are linked to our intentions. So, uh, and they can be perceived by others. They can bother others. And if you start to be uh, know, knowing about this, then you're more aware of yourself. And that's the first step that brings one day spiritual intelligence. And of course, uh, to answer your question, at the beginning, it's more people, one person at a time, oneself. We work on ourselves, and just what we emanate. Even if we don't talk about emotional intelligence or spirituality or dreams, you are with the families or you are in a shop, you are with a taxi dri driver, employees, you emanate this new consciousness, even without imposing, thinking, oh, I'm going to send him in, you know, energy to change. No, no, just emanate. One rises, all rise. Right. So... It, and then the collective on the collective dimension, it takes more time. Mm -hmm. We have to be patient. And this is why sometimes people that are on a spiritual path, they want too much to change the exterior because it resonates with what they haven't changed yet that disturbed them. So with the law of resonance, we come back to ourselves. The law of resonance is a scientific law which explains what we are and who we are. We attract it you know, the affinities, resonance. So when we are bothered, we come back to ourselves, we change ourselves. That's mm -hmm. our responsibility. And to come back to responsibility and detachment, there is an excellent mantra when we are at work and stress and we have to provide, you know, figures or anything. A good mantra is to do detachment, responsibility, detachment, responsibility because if we just sometimes do the mantra detachment 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 we can become over detached and then we are no longer responsible just the fact that you add this intention of responsibility you have to do something you are responsible right and also the present moment mm -hmm. i think is a very important <laughs> key and i remember when i met christian she 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 shared this with me uh, to learn to live our day like if it is the first and the last day. Mm. I have practiced this when I was a hermit, you know, and uh, I met her during the phases, almost uh, quite near the end. And and this was so extraordinary to learn to wash my hands like if it was the first time. I was appreciating the water. I was even thinking about rivers and lakes and, and the sea how precious it is. Mm. I was thinking about the workers that are bringing this water, this mm. pure water that I can drink. So so there's an awareness. This is what being spiritual is all about. It's about thinking deep. It's about understanding. Uh, it's like we, we switch it, you know? We have collective that we think is the highest things and we have personal. But let's switch it. Mm. Collectiveness is everything that you do, and personal is you observe that. And you look at this in a causal dimension, in a way where, and every time I incarnate myself in an action, I want this action to be right. Right. And I do my best. I'm and not I do harsh my best. Myself. Yeah, that's a key also. Yeah. She's right. You know, because. <laughs> so it's detachment, responsibility, yeah. and I will do my best. Yes. And experimentation. Hmm. Because we learn like this. A child is always making mistakes. Yeah. And he's a good spiritual master. Because I he's guess so you always can keep on adding reborn. those layers yes. as you move on more and more. Yes. Because yes. from what I understand, we're not just responsible for our actions, we're also responsible for our non actions. Yes. Yes, definitely. And emotional intelligence is very it's important. It's not just a trend. I know mm. now, even EQ business, we have requested now in top corporation because they need to understand the Z generation. Mm. Because there's a there's a problem. That, you know, because the Z, gener the Z generation, they are very, very collective people. 
Mm. Very, very collective beings. And the pandemic has not really helped and has helped also mm. to develop the consciousness at, at a spiritual level. Because when we talk about spirituality, we talk about collectiveness. Mm. You know, it is energy. Right. Spirit is energy. So this is where we need to go now. We need mm. to understand that, you know, the, 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 the dimension that uh, everyone is a star with social medias, et cetera, et cetera. So when you arrive at, at, uh, at the business, you're not impressed by the CEO anymore. Mm. You just want it, the same car, maybe, but you're not impressed anymore by him. You will be impressed if he's good and a good father and a good mother. Because that's the next step of management. That's why emotional intelligence is important. We cannot just say, I do this, I do that. IQ, practical, scientific, tech, 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 tech. No, no. Emotions are expanding the world of ideas. Hmm. I'm making them even more deep, even more extraordinary and profound because emotion are movement. Hmm. An ID doesn't move by itself. Right. If you don't want to do your IDs, maybe it will stay in your mind mm. and you will not manifest. You need emotion. You need emotion to create a movement. That's beautiful. So, yeah. But guys, thank you so much. This conversation has been so enlightening. I think uh, I've never... Uh, like I said before the podcast that I never thought about dreaming like the way you said and how manifestation and emotional intelligence can be such a strong part of it. Um for the audiences who have seen this podcast till the end, I would really insist that you log on to the website uh, ucm.center and check out some of the free courses if you really want to start dreaming, if you want to start uh, thinking about manifesting your life better, or if you want to develop a sense of emotional intelligence, even if you're a business leader in a business that you're doing, or even if you're someone who's doing social media, I think uh, this whole overall experience has been so great. Guys, thank you so much for doing this with us. I'm very, very honored. Thank you so much. It's been a great joy.